Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and we're at challenge question number four of Professor Dave Challenges the Flat Earth. Now the Flat Earth has answered and we're going through the answers. There'll be a link to Professor Dave's video in the description of this one. I'm not going to give the attention and the oxygen to the generic Flat Earther that came up with this nonsense because it's not unique to him. It's common amongst all Flat Earthers and we've heard this so many times before. Well, today we're going to go ahead and have a look at the infamous I see too far argument. So let's cue up the music and get going. Number four, after I demolished essentially all of your favorite talking points in my previous videos, you all now cling primarily to the classic I shouldn't see this thing argument. You love this one because you can lie about heights and distances, do incorrect math, and in general act incredulous without having to actually do any science. Now we're talking about this issue, which is your biggest problem actually, that we can see things that we shouldn't be able to see if the horizon were as it should be if the Earth were a globe with a circumference of 40,000 kilometers. Okay, just to kind of blow you out of the water to begin with, first of all, you like to use J. Tolan Media One. J. Tolan Media One cannot identify land masses from an airplane. I've demonstrated this repeatedly. He constantly is misrepresenting things that he sees out of a window of a commercial jet. For example, he identified a cloud bank once as Hudson Bay. He puts these elaborate scales on them, yet they don't match what you actually see on the ground because I can actually identify objects on the ground. It's something that I do, all right? Second of all, what you constantly attempt to do in the flat earth is take advantage of actual science to manipulate your data. For example, it's classic for you to put cameras inches above water to take maximum advantage of refraction. You see the top half of buildings from Chicago from an observation height of 180 feet at the Warren Dunes. And mind you, you never mention the fact it's from 180 feet. You imply it's from the shoreline. We see the top half of buildings missing more than 700 feet of the bottom half. And it's on a specific type of a day with very high refraction a warm spring day that's very calm with cold Lake Michigan water setting up a temperature inversion. The fact that Chicago appeared that day was so unique it actually made the local news. And it's a well-known and well-demonstrated example of looming. So I have a challenge for you. There is a ferry called the SS Badger that leaves Ludington, Michigan and goes over to Wisconsin 80 miles away. I want you to get on a dune 20 feet above the lake level to make sure that all the waves of the lake are below you. And I want you to film the SS Badger from the time it leaves port until it docks on the other side of the lake. If the earth is flat, you will easily be able to see it the entire way. If it's curved, you're going to watch it disappear from the bottom up and go over the curve of the horizon. As a matter of fact, I'll give you $1,000 if you can give me a waterline view of the SS Badger in Wisconsin from Ludington, Michigan. If not, you're going to give me $1,000. Care to take me up on the bet? We do the math. And if you want to talk about the visibility of the approximations that are made, that's nitpicking when the plus or minus several feet or several meters isn't going to make up the difference for you when we can see a mountain a hundred miles away. This is what I'm talking about with these elaborate scales as if somehow this works. First of all, these scales are designed to work on a flat plane. They're not designed to work on a curved surface. Second of all, from airline heights, approximately 33,000 feet, your horizon is 215 or so miles away. Notice he has this graduated out all the way out to 720 miles, as if he could possibly see that far. Second of all, you can identify that spit of land right there where it says five degrees. You can see it go through that. 
And then you just see a blur of stuff above it. I have no idea what's out there. I see some lakes over here on the left, but I don't see any identifiable landmarks out there that I can clearly say that that is X number of miles away. Now on some of his Lake Huron photographs, you can. You can see islands in Georgian Bay that can be identified. But that's just a blur of nonsense out there, and we have no idea what it is. Now a better example would be his Mount San Jacinto observation, which is a very clear photograph from 123 miles of this mountain in California, Mount San Jacinto. Do you see where that cross is? That's 6,200 feet up the mountain. Notice it's sitting right on the horizon. Where's the 6,000 feet of that mountain that is below this cross? It's hidden behind the curve of the earth. Tolan took this picture and couldn't analyze it properly. He couldn't identify landmarks on the mountain. He misidentified the peaks, even though they're really quite clear, and seemed to think that this was the entire mountain. It is not. Let me show you the entire mountain. Let's go see what happens when we change it from this view, which is on a curved earth, to one that's on a flat earth. There's the mountain. Where's the rest of that mountain? There you go. That's flat earth. That's a curved earth. The curved earth is what matches the photograph Jay Tolan took. So as far as this photograph goes, hand wave dismissal because it's made up. The scale is made up. The landmarks are made up. It's nonsense. It's not even worth considering. That is a huge problem for you. And what we hear when we bring this up is that the landscape must be such by elevation that the hump of the curvature of the earth is not there because the land elevation it must be going downhill and back uphill so that's why it looks flat but it's, but the earth isn't flat so therefore we do it over water a lot of times but we've done both and the results are astounding they are observable they are observations they are mathematical because we mathematically predict what we should be able to see and how much of it should be covered up. There is atmospheric occlusion that covers up some of it. The vanishing point limits of resolution and visibility. But that's minor uh, when we can see entire oil platforms and things like that that should be mostly hidden. Okay, this is the infamous black swan photograph and this has really been beaten to death. I'm going to point out a couple of quick things. First of all, he claims to be at eight feet elevation. I doubt that. Second of all, do you see this catwalk down here? Notice that catwalk is right on the horizon here. Now there is a horizon out past this, and that's due to atmospheric refraction. Now he's making up a term called atmospheric occlusion, which is a special type of blocking because it only blocks the very bottom of an object, but leaves the top, which is the same distance away, intact. Now, the other thing that he talks about is the diffraction limit, or the Raleigh criterion. To give you an idea of the Raleigh criterion, the human eye can discern two lights as distinct, different lights if they are one minute of angle apart. To give you an idea of what this means on the real world, if you had a 100 meter high building, it would have to be 800 kilometers away before the top and the bottom of that building merged. One of the things that I like to do, and especially with this particular challenge, and that is show me something long distance over land, is I want you to go west or southwest of Chicago. That's prairie land out there. You can get up on a building 100 meters high, take me a picture, of the Chicago Willis Tower from 350 miles away. There's nothing between you and the Willis Tower. You can use a telescope if you want, but just show me that you can see it from that distance. Again, $1,000 bet. Take me up on it, because I don't think that you can do it, because the Earth is spherical and the surface is curved. 
and things go below the curve of the horizon, and there is no way you're going to be able to see a 1,450-foot-high building, which is well above the Raleigh criteria, I might add, from 350 miles. And then while you're at it, if you want to, in the comments down there, tell me what one minute of angle would be at 350 miles. I'll calculate it too, and I'll let you know if you're right. And when I mean entire, even though we can't see the very bottom of it because of temperature changes and things like that, we can see the, the ocean behind it all the way up to another oil platform. And we can see all the way down that. And then the horizon is behind that. And the horizon should actually be between us and the first oil platform. That's major. That is very major. So I don't appreciate these accusations when if you look at the facts you're just talking you know it's not based on the actual things that we're talking about well actually it is it's based on the very well understood phenomenon of refraction of light this video was taken in october with relatively calm seas so you've got warm air over cold ocean without a lot of wind you're going to get the horizon bent up it's very common. Look at my Titanic video, and you will see examples of this very clearly given. This is a completely expected and understood result, and it's actually kind of a sense of amusement to those of us that actually know something about science that they keep going on about this. So, be that as it may, we'll continue. So this challenge has been met. It's really a challenge for you, but if you want to challenge us on our best evidence, there's no best evidence. I mean, any one thing demolishes the heliocentric model. Well, you have two $1,000 bets on the table. Go to an elevation of no more than 100 meters, 350 miles from Chicago, and take a picture of the Willis Tower for me. You can use a telescope. The other thing is go to Ludington, Michigan and track the SS Badger as it crosses 80 miles across Lake Michigan to Wisconsin and give me a waterline photograph of the SS Badger as it docks across the lake in Wisconsin. Do either of those, you got $1,000. Do both of them, you have $2,000. Challenge me on either one of them and lose, you owe me some money. So there's your challenge, my friend. There's no best evidence. I mean, any one thing demolishes the heliocentric model. It's been demolished so many times. What do you, why are you clinging to this fad? <laughs> well, every time you whine about this, the objects are always suspiciously close, such that you can fudge the numbers, and they're always over water. So you can lie about refractive effects to people who have no idea how refraction works. So try this one on for size. Show me a picture of something over land that's a thousand miles away. May I suggest the middle of the country where there's not much in the way? I can't believe this. I really, I, I think you're, okay, I won't say anything. I, won't, I don't want to say anything about someone's intelligence. I guess I have to say you can't see through air forever. It's like a fluid. It's like when you look, when you're in, uh, on the ocean and you look down and you can't see the bottom when it's, 800 feet down, um, is, is that confusing? No, my friend, it's not confusing at all because you see that part of the moon right there? If that is 3,000 miles above your flat earth, the bottom is also 3,000 miles above your flat earth. And how far is it from this observer to that moon? Well, I can guarantee you it's more than 3,000 miles, and I can see the top part. Why can't I see the bottom part? They're both the same distance away. Look at the border between the water and the moon. You see how sharp that is? Do you see any distortion there? Do you see any miraging? Do you see compression? No. You see a very clear-cut border between the moon and the water but just the top half of the moon. The bottom half is below the curve of the Earth. Or do you understand why you can't see that bottom? Uh, air is the same way, Dave. It, it's, 
Do you really think it's possible to see a thousand miles through lower atmosphere? I mean, I shouldn't have to explain this. Okay, let's move on. Well, what was the other insult? Probably something about your cherry picking and lack of intellectual integrity, but that's not really an insult. It's demonstrable fact. Do it in the middle of the country so there's nothing in the way. You mean at ground level, or what are you talking about? I mean, there there would be trees and houses and windmills, and I'm thinking of things that I've seen at great distances. Um, Why don't you do it from an airplane over Dallas? Give Dave a picture of Las Vegas from... 30,000 feet above Dallas. There's no trees in the way. There's no buildings in the way. There's no birds or even dust particles in the way. You're 33,000 feet high. Just point out Las Vegas. You can do it at night so all the lights are on. It's just look at, look at it the day. To get a camera. Get a camera and check it out. It's amazing. It's a straight shot after all. So what's the problem? Use a telescope. Pull Las Vegas into focus from Dallas, Texas. Isn't that where you have your little meeting? Maybe you should try doing something productive rather than blindly perpetuating the dumbest hoax on the internet. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy indeed. So why don't you just shut up and do it? You have these random slideshows going, you're doing 15,000 other things and just addressing this video as an afterthought. How about you buckle down, pay attention, and actually do some real science? Get on a commercial airliner at 33,000 feet. Take me a picture of Las Vegas, Nevada from over Dallas, Texas. It's 1,000 miles. Conversely, go up 100 meters in a building 350 miles from Chicago and take a picture of the Willis Tower. Or sit on a sand dune 20 feet off the water, well above the waves, and take a picture of the SS Badger as it completely crosses Lake Michigan. You should be able to do all of these things. So, this is Bob the Science Guy. There's a bet and money on the table. Take me up on it, please. I've got a lawyer. We'll write up a contract and put the money in escrow so that you know that it's there. But you're putting yours in, too. Because if you can't do it, I'm taking your money. Make sure you guys hit that little like and subscribe button down there. Ring the bell icon so you know when the next one comes out. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thanks again for stopping by and take care.